All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mod and Pop Thrift. My name is Tom, stay-at-home dad extraordinaire for five extraordinary children, and I am a full-time eBay reseller. And today we're going to talk about the things that sold and maybe some other stuff. We'll see what happens. Let's get into it. We'll just jump off the top with the best sale I've had in a while. I paid $85 for this two days ago and it sold yesterday. So I had this listed for about 24 hours. It is the world is a vampire. And then it has the uh, Smashing Pumpkins tour hit on the back. It's from 1996. Um, I paid $85. I knew it was good. I expected it to, I listed it for 250 and expected somebody to send somebody an offer for 200 bucks and then pick it up feeling like they got a 20% discount. But I really valued that shirt right around $200, but I had it listed for 24 hours and somebody grabbed it. And I did because I'm a uh, nerdy or a gossipy old lady. I don't know. For whatever reason, I looked up the address of the person who uh, bought it just to see. And it turns out it's a vintage clothing shop in Kansas City. And so they probably will flip it. But I'm not worried. I know that some people have been scammed on high-end t-shirts. And so I was like, I'm going to look this up just because. Um, and it uh, turned out it was a... A vintage clothing shop and he has several Smashing Pumpkins t-shirts that are in the five and six hundred dollar range so I suspect he thinks he's gonna make a profit on that I hope he does I did um, so if you find old band shirts they are serious money the top two shirts that I've ever sold uh, was a Kurt Cobain shirt that I paid like I paid fifty dollars for and it sold for 175 and then this shirt I paid $85 for and it sold for 250 so early and mid 90s rock bands um, the shirts do super well so do I normally plastic bag t-shirts when I ship plastic them out bag, no plastic bag, but plastic are, bag, do I normally ship $250 t-shirts no so I'm gonna I plastic bag this I'm gonna put it in a an priority envelope and then I'm going to add insurance because at $250 if this gets lost in the mail we're both frustrated uh, so I'm gonna add insurance on top of the $50 that this envelope automatically gives me um, yeah and I don't have any doubt that it'll get there securely with no issues but it just make me feel better that's the point of the insurance right if something does happen I'm probably still out because I don't ever make a claim on insurance and I uh, have heard that making a claim on insurance is worthless with USPS. Let's talk about that in the comments. Have you ever made a claim on a USPS, UPS, or FedEx? And if so, did you get the money? Was it a pain in the butt? I have never personally made a claim. I had a customer make a claim once like he had, I shipped something UPS, he had a UPS account, so he never got the item and he opened a claim and he did get paid. Um, I have never made a claim. I've had probably a dozen packages get lost, but it's never been anything where I'm like, oh, I gotta get that money back and made it worth figuring out. Uh, mostly cause I'm lazy. Have you ever made a claim? Is it a pain in the butt? Did you get the full value back? Fingers crossed, this, we're not gonna need to worry about the insurance, but I'm gonna pay for it anyway, just in case. More Hoarder House Pulp Fiction. These are, I get the impression that they're like mystery novels, 
by Edgar Rice Burroughs, who wrote Tarzan and John Carter. Um, this is two, obviously they're the same like production run, but they aren't from the same uh, series or something. But uh, they sold for a little bit of nothing. But I have I have almost almost literally nothing into them. I uh, probably a penny a piece. All right, on the subject of band tees, Led Zeppelin, this uh, really cool kind of rainbow ombre uh, tie dye, 1975 tour. This is screen printed internal tag. I don't know what year this is from. It's definitely not from 75. Um, it's probably in the last four or five years. But I paid $2.48 for it. And I think it sold for like $16.99 plus shipping. So while it isn't, I don't generally pick up modern reproduction old t-shirts. But this is Led Zeppelin. And it's bright colors. And it's going to sell quick if you price it right. So for $2.48, knowing that it would sell in just a couple of days, I think that was a, a decent flip. And it's in my wheelhouse, right? I mean, it's a band tee, even if it's not a current band tee or an authentic vintage band tee. It's still a cool piece that somebody's gonna want and I can make quick money on. These, uh, if you've been with the channel for like a week, um, these you saw these Tommy snow pants I picked up for like either $3.99 or $5.99. $4.99, these are from 2001 and they are some Tommy Hilfiger uh, ski pants. Uh, in the last couple of days, they've been listed for less than a week. And then this I picked up for 50 cents. It is a Snap It is the name. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and it is a power cord with a switch in it. Obviously an antique power cord to an appliance. Um, and so I suspect somebody's probably just going to take this cording and add it to a decorative lamp. Um, maybe they have the appliance that that plugs into, who knows? But if I were going to keep this, I would probably find an old lamp to rewire with this really cool looking antique wire that is in good shape. Anyway, I paid 50 cents and I've had it for six or eight weeks. I don't know what it's like where you are, but it is one degree here and some of the stuff that I had was stored outside, so it is cold. Spiegel's, Spiegel's catalog. It's just a department store in Chicago. This is from 1959, and so it's got a lot of that mid-century modern home decor and 50s style stuff in it. Sold better than I would have expected. Um, I don't remember, I think it sold for like $12.99 maybe. Um, and I got it for nothing out of the Hoarder House. 2XL Carhartt t-shirt. Um, I wanna say this might've been flawed. Maybe I washed it and the flaw came out. Um, I picked it up for $2.48 at Goodwill. It was listed for like a week. This cardigan has a little bit of a tale to tell. I've never heard of Cloft as a brand. It says it's made in California. The, the tag just looks vintage, but the si there is no size tag. There's no what it's made out of tag. But let's look at the pattern and I'll hold it up, but then I'll put the thing on the screen. It's probably like, it's really, really small size. So it probably would be mid-waist or... No, not for you, baby. For you? No, it's for shipping. It fits me. It fits you? Mm -hmm. um, probably would be mid-thigh on the woman that this would fit, but she would have to be petite because it's really low. Anyway, uh, so I couldn't sell it as wool. I couldn't, but I believe that that pattern, that Aztec pattern is all that sold this piece it's a really nice pattern and i highlighted it in in the listing 
Uh, Judah found this at Goodwill the other day for $1.99 and wanted to pick it up. I told him I didn't think it was a good idea. He was righter than me. Uh, I listed it for nine bucks plus shipping and it sold a lot faster than I expected it to. More books out of the hoarder house. Way of the Dog and the sequel to Way of the Dog, Trev, and evidently this isn't Lassie, it's Trev. And so I lotted these two together. And they sold for not very much money on the global shipping program. A yearbook from a technical high school in Chicago, 1951 and 52. Um, sold for like 15 bucks and it came out of the hoarder house. Ladies Carhartt. These, I know they're ladies because they're size 14. And so these are ladies beat up Carhartts. I paid $6.99 at Goodwill. They sold for like 45 bucks, and they've been listed a couple of days. Um, I think that's everything that sold. Oh, uh, well, might as well do this. This hat sold for $14.90, uh, and it was, I've had it a long time. And uh, then uh, this Raiders coffee mug. This is a cool LA Raiders coffee mug, and it's vintage. Sometimes the vintage, because the Raiders... It's Rams, it's not Raiders. Sometimes the LA Rams stuff will, the vintage LA Rams stuff will do well because they used to be in LA and then they went to St. Louis and then they came back to LA and so the vintage stuff can command a little bit of a premium. Uh, this coffee mug was just really, really nice considering it's a coffee mug. I mean, it's thick, it's well designed, uh, it's big and uh, it sold for $22.49 on offer but I've had it for at least six months. I think that's all that sold. I didn't pull those other two things yet because they sold since I started making the video. Evelyn needs a drink. You want me to fill that cup? Say bye, Mod and Pop Thrift. So we hit this thrift store real quick. I just piled up this box of stuff. I didn't have my phone. And so let's see what this stuff is worth together. This is a Hulk stick with seeing green Marvel. I think it's from 2003. Probably not worth anything, but it was, I paid $3 for the entire box. Um, and so I figured this, I could give this to the boys if it's not worth anything. It probably isn't. This is a snorkel and goggles. And like the, it's supple. It's, uh, the rubber is nice still. Um, so let's see, this is ERO. Obviously it needs cleaned. And this is C-A-L-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A and says N Nimrod on the snorkel. I'm trying to see if there are any. Just says Topaz made in Spain. There's no other model numbers on any of that. This I think is the coup de gras post Versalog. And some of these can really be worth some coin. Post, I don't know if that's a serial number or a model number. Post. I guess we're going to suppose that that's a model number when we try to look it up. It's too bad that screen's cracked. It doesn't affect the functionality, but it probably does collect, so affect the collector value. This, I wouldn't normally pick this kind of thing up. It is just kind of a generic old school tape player. Uh, it does not have the auxiliary power cord. The reason that I picked it up was A, it was super crazy cheap, and B, it has a joystick that controls the functionality. Stop, play, fast forward, and rewind. And that seemed unique enough to make it worth picking up. Levi and I were judging a book by its cover. Um, he found this, said, hey dad, here's an old book. We looked it up, it's from the 40s and it's a book club edition. The dust jacket's in bad shape. The book is in good shape. I don't know. 
And then there's this, and it's new open box. Like this plastic has been torn, but I got into it and everything else is in perfectly good shape. It's a DCX 170. So how'd I do on my $3 box? I saw this sitting there when I first started the video, but then it jumped out of the box. The Miller Planisphere. It's like a, like you turn it and see what stars you can see at what time during the day. Made in the U.S. does not have a uh, website, but it doesn't seem to have a model number either. I'm sure we can figure that out. This, it has the remote, and this actually is the factory remote, even though it says universal remote, and it has the manual, and it is a Sanyo VHR 5436. There's only, we paid 10 bucks. There's only one listed and it doesn't have a remote and there's only one sold that doesn't, and it doesn't have the remote and it sold for 30 plus shipping. So I'm gonna try and get 45 plus shipping because the remote by itself will sell for like 15 bucks. So uh, I think I did all right on that. All right guys, well, it has been a couple of days and it turns out that VCR did not work, but um, the remote does work and it had the manual so I think I can lot those together and still get like $20 uh, Plus shipping which will maybe $20 free shipping anyway I'll recoup my money even if I didn't don't make much money on that But I'll make enough money on the rest of the stuff that I bought uh, For three bucks shouldn't get I'm not gonna get hurt um, That's why I like to gamble on some of that kind of stuff like that VCR there wasn't any way to test it and I knew I was going to make money on the other stuff. So even taking the gamble on that VCR, it's uh, I'm still making money on the, the transaction overall. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the like button, comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. And if you're not seeing my videos that I put up every two or three days, then uh, click the notification bell and that'll solve that problem. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one, guys.